You were very, very exhausted this afternoon and you did a, a hell of a live show. Where did you find the strength to do this? Uh, I don't know. It's... Um, after the second song, uh, Blasphemer was just screaming at me and um, everything was okay. Uh, I had an adrenaline kick from a black hole in space. How long do you think you're going to survive a tour like this? Well, if I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to have to go on tours like this again, I don't know. Um, but um, because the tour in the States was great. The bus was excellent. And it was just a few people, air conditioner, everything. But on this tour, it was like fucking hell. But still, was it any... Was it important for them to do this tour? Yes, of course. The, 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 the old fans who are here to judge you as a replacement for the legendary dead, blah, blah, blah. Did they get something for their money? I think so. I think so, definitely. Because um, a lot of the fans have been really into it. And uh, I think I've done a good job on this tour. Can you show your arm a bit to the camera? <laughs> this arm? Barbed wire is uh, nice for your body. What, what is leading you to do this? I've heard that during the tour as well, you in the tour bus cut the arm of a girl who asked for it. What's with auto mutilation on stage? Is it just Marilyn Manson night or that's something deeper than just entertaining? It keeps me alive. It brings me closer to life. If I didn't do it, if I didn't feel all the pain, I would have been dead for many years ago. Talking about this and suicide, I know that's uh, a subject you've been close to a couple of times, and that also your uh, brain in mayhem, you're bringing mayhem to new philosophical hype and a lot of things. Do you think metal freaks get this, all you're talking about? Don't you feel like you're like talking to brain this kid sometime? Yeah, sometimes I do, but um, I don't know. If I can get the message out to a few people, then I'm satisfied. Just a few people who can get the message. Because, um, I don't know, this is very important for me and I want to bring it out. But a lot of people doesn't get it, of course they don't. So intellectual and metal can go along together? I think so. I think so, really. And uh, Grand Decoration of War, the first part was good lyrics, and the second part you went cryptic again. You're going to be more cryptic because you go further in your study, or are you going to get back to reality next time? No, um, I've already written uh, two lyrics for the next Mayhem album, and um, at least one of them is extremely cryptic. Uh, and the other one is straight in the face, but, um, or I don't know, maybe not straight in the face, but it's going to be a very ugly album. So I have to write some shorter lyrics and uh, uh, it's going to be, yeah, very fucking cryptic. All right. Um Moving on to another subject, um, Mania, the future, still on the ground, a bigger band, opening for bigger bands, or still being like the elite, the elite of black metal, even if few people understand you, even if you have to disappoint your fans. Um, I'm not really sure about it because uh, we might do a tour in the States with the bigger brand. Do you know which one? No. Well, actually I do, but I won't tell you. Uh, so I don't know, but we always want to headline, you know. We are very serious about the headlining because um, opening up for someone is hell. It's You get bad sound, you get all the shit, and we don't really want to do it. Last question. Do you think your lyrics that you're being understood or that you will be later 
I think maybe some of my lyrics will be understood in a hundred years from now. Also, we played in Grenoble yesterday. Everybody is fucking crazy down here. Also, you guys are fucking nuts. What was the question again? The security just took out a skinhead with a bursum shirt, beat the crap out of him, and he's bleeding in the street. What do you think? Don't think. Not happy about it? Don't think anybody, uh, anything about shit like that. You know, I don't. Don't concern myself about politics, religion, or any other shit. I just do my work. Plays guitar is for mayhem. Down here in Marseille. Doing this fucking shit. Wanna go home now? I'm true. Fucking finished. Fuck off. One thing in mayhem, you're supposed to be the funny guy. And as well, you're supposed to be the businessman, the man in charge, the man to trust. How can that be true? That's not true. Never trust the businessman. Never trust the businessman, okay, but are the other guys unreliable? Yeah, they are very much unreliable, the, the whole bunch. We are very unstable persons. Extrema, huh? all to the end. Always. All right, I think that's about it. Okay, thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Hello, hello. Hello. You've been on tour for now almost two months in the USA and uh, in Europe. Just wanted to know how's life on the tour in general and the very special anecdotes that you have to tell us. Well, the tour has been going very good actually. Um, uh, lots of things occurred over the, the weeks, but uh, overall it was very good and actually a bit funny. Uh, with the uh, girls with bananas up there, snatch and things like that. So, uh, but uh, yeah, it was good. We had a little incident in Spain, you know, which was not very nice. So I got beaten up, and, uh, but they had a problem. But were they looking for a fight, or was it just uh, fans like of the old mayhem and of a new mayhem fighting over, or they were attacking you directly? How no. far can a fan go? I don't think it was fans, I think it was some kind of uh, drunks, drug addicts maybe. They were beating the crap out of our sound man. There was no fucking security on that gig. And uh, going there in a little while with the Covenant. <laughs> with security, I guess, this time. Yeah, hopefully. Or else, uh, I don't know. I'll just be, uh, bought a beating stick, so. All right. <laughs> just a question, like, Hellhammer on stage, do you play for yourself, for the music, or for the audience? Uh, actually all three, you know, but uh, first and foremost for myself, I guess. I mean, if I'm not satisfied with the gig, you know, I'm, I'm pissed off. Um, uh, I like to perform my best each time. It's not possible, but maybe in the future, I will, maybe, hopefully. Life on the tour is very hard. You're about, I don't know, two weeks sleeping on the couch, which is not even big for most of you. Must be smelling, must be horrible in a tour bus. I mean, people think that Mayhem, with such a big name, you have all the accommodation to go on a tour. But what I saw is that it's still totally underground and that you must have a lot of will to do it. What brings you to tour again and again? Because you're touring with so many bands a year. How can you cope with it? You just have to get used to it, you know. Uh, when you're doing life on the road, you have to... I mean, you have to tell yourself that, uh, well, it's going to be hard, but uh, you just have to make it. And uh, of course, it's lots of smelling stage clothes, you know, limited space, no fucking privacy at all. But uh, for me, it works actually very good. Talking about the lineup of Mayhem now, it's pretty common knowledge that you guys sometimes just hate each other and still you know each other for years. 
is it legend or is that actually some part of it is true? There has been a lot of beating up each other maybe, but uh, I guess in uh, in the end we all get along very good actually. You know, it's there's a lot of rumors going on with me. I mean, when just fifty percent is true, maybe. <laughs> Also, there's rumors saying that this will be the very last thing coming out of Mayhem, that this is your kind of legacy, because at the rate you're producing album, it's not very sure that there'll be another one, and maybe this will be the last thing. True? Possible? Not true? Um, this will not be the last thing you heard of Mayhem, that's for sure. We will have a new record out in about... within two years, I hope. And believe. That's very fast because it's very very fast for you because you did about 16 songs in 16 years. Well, I mean, uh, instead of being lazy and drinking beer, you know, start to work professional now. Even though we had some problems in the past, which limited us, you know, from fucking suicides to to murders, you know, and. Uh, you know, it's, it says itself, you know, that we cannot progress as fast as we wanted to. But now we have a stable lineup, and everybody is in for the professionality. And uh, we will do have out the record in within two years. Yes. And what can we expect this, this time? Because if we learn something, it's to expect the unexpected. Uh, you should always expect the unexpected from Mayhem. I mean, the new record will be like totally crushing. Very fast, very brutal, and very technical. Can you get more technical with your drumming? You think you are you are you are at your highest peak, or you can even get better? If this is my peak, then uh, I'm just you know quit. You know. I uh, hope I always will progress as a drummer. Is there still drummers you consider as influences or like people you reach, of, you dream of reaching their levels one day? Yeah, absolutely, there is thousands of them. Give me one or two names. Well, how about uh, Dave Weckl or Winnie Colaiuta or even Buddy Rich. That's very, very wise influences for a male guy. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, metal drummers are, you know, uh, it's cool to play metal and stuff, you know, but uh, I mean, if you limit yourself to only playing metal stuff, you know, it's, uh, think that your progression is going slower than it normally would. So I listen to a lot of music actually, and I like a lot of different drummers, different music styles, and uh, not only that. So we can expect maybe one day Hellhammer is a jazz band in the same totally. project of Mayhem? Totally, yes, totally. would love to do that. I actually have done it, and um, it's cool. Okay. <laughs> Runa, yeah. since you arrived in Mayhem a couple oh. of times ago, yeah. you're like, as you tell yourself, the musical genius in the band. <laughs> the music has evolved a lot and everything. Yeah. Isn't that a dream of a child for you to become one of the no to play in the Norwegian best band? A dream? Well, um, yeah, well, it's it's uh, good for them, you know. That I'm in a band. Still, you brought the band to higher musical levels. Yeah. And I guess you're pretty damn proud about it. Sure, of course. I mean, everything, like um, production-wise, uh, sound, everything has um, increased. You know, everything is so much better now. I think. And even the structuring of um, the compositions. Everything is so much better, so of course I'm proud of it. And where's the future of Runa 
the uh, as a musician? Is it in Mayhem? Is it in other bands, another side project, another music? I mean, it's very difficult to break out of the, the barrier of Mayhem in a way. Um, Mayhem has, you know, a name because of a lot of things that has happened in the past, you know, and I think that um, bringing it even further than I've done uh, now is like uh, it will take me fucking many many years, I think, to uh, to explore it even more and to get the fans to stay stay behind it. So um, I don't know what will happen. I have some side projects, of course. And uh, I don't know. Let's see. A couple of years. All right. But um, how can I say this? Um, you think in mayhem, from what you're saying, that the history and the, the rumors, the murders, the legends are almost as important as the music. And you're conscious that you were that not part of this at this, at this time. Uh, what I'm saying is that. Mayhem has a reputation of being total, pure fucking black metal, which it still is, of course. But we try to expand the genre. I want to expand it. But uh, a lot of fans don't understand this. And the new people uh, are not willing to actually get into Mayhem because of the history of the past. You know what I mean? So in a way you're saying that this last album was an anti-commercial demarch. Yeah, it was. but. Uh, I don't think like that. I do what I want to do. I want to express myself through the music. It's my philosophy, you know. So, no, but it's good to stay true to yourself. Oh yeah. But uh, with old die-hard Mayhem fans disappointed, and a new crew which is not totally black metal, Mayhem is doing what it did years ago. It's gonna take maybe five years for people to to understand and it's to recognize the album for yeah. what it is, a masterpiece. You're exactly. willing to wait that long, or Mayhem won't survive it. Mayhem will, I guess, uh, since the four of us are in the band and uh, we have the, um, uh, the soul and we want to continue, we feel that this is the right thing to do, I think Mayhem always uh, will survive. People compare you as Jason Newsteed in Metallica, the new young guy who brought mm. new blood to the band and new anger and a new attitude. I mean, you were the one who's, you were the one who's throwing TV out of hotel room. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Well, um, I don't like being compared to people. I am myself and uh, I am unique, totally unique. So. Still replacing a dead guy's shoes is That's never true. easy. I know, but um, I had some difficulties in the, in the, uh, in the start, of course. I had. There was um, a lot of people, oh no, ma'am doesn't uh, exist anymore, blah blah. But I said that when dead committed suicide, I also said the same thing. You know, and uh, when the mysterious Dom Satanos came out, everybody was like, "Wow, what a fucking great album!" And when Your Romans died, people were saying the same thing. And uh, I think we proven them wrong once again. Good. So I wish you the best of luck for the next of your career, and that we all expect the next masterpiece of the Iconic Creation. Thank you.